friends are. So, all right. Well, question number one says, is it possible to get into a car and drive for two hours and have an average velocity of zero? So let's remember the formula for velocity. Velocity is really change in position over time. Okay, and, and sometimes you see that as D over T, delta X over T, but you gotta be really careful here. It's change in position. We talked about this at great length last night. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, the, the, this is, it's an unrealistic situation because nobody just gets in their car and drives and then gets back to where they started. But in truth, you could start here and you could drive and drive and drive and drive. And it's, and it's doesn't matter what you do, as long as you end up back where you started, your change in position is zero. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how long you're driving, whether it's two hours, two minutes, two days. If you end up back where you started, yes, your average velocity can be zero because your change in position is zero. Basically, you didn't go anywhere. You, you started mm -hmm. your, your start equals your end point. So is that, is that okay? Is that clear? Is that enough explanation for that one? Yeah. The more common one is, is uh, sorry, let me undo what I did. The more common one is to be on a track and you just get back where you started. Yeah. All right. Okay. If the speedometer. If the speedometer in your car, so first of all, the speedometer in your car, it measures speed. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you're going this way in your car and I'm going this way in my car, yours says 40 miles per hour and mine says 40 miles per hour. It doesn't say negative and negative or negative and positive, right? Yeah. So does it, so speed doesn't take into account direction. Mm -hmm. So uh, if your car reads a constant 35 miles per hour as you travel down a winding mountain road, can you say the car has constant speed okay so the question is is like i guess the i guess the question here is like what the, they're trying to get you to understand that speed is the distance you travel over time okay yeah so if if you if you go 35 miles in one hour and if you go 70 miles in two hours what is your average speed in both of these cases? And what I'm really asking is what is 35 divided by one? What is 70 divided by two? It is always 35 miles per hour. 35. Let me know if you caught that. So it's always going, so it's going to be a constant speed. Yes, because the speed, it doesn't, see, here's the thing, what this, I think what this question is asking, and, and you're driving now, is that right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you, drive, you drive now, okay. So here's 35 miles per hour. We'll just call that 35 miles per hour. Sometimes you drive a little bit faster than that, sometimes a little bit slower, maybe a lot faster, maybe a lot slower, but you essentially are always averaging this. Because all it takes into account is how far you, you traveled over your time. Okay. So, so I think what they're trying to get you to say, say is, uh, is, is like, um, they, they want, the, the, the instructor's looking for something here where you, you explain that speed doesn't take into account whether you went, you know, up, down, left, or right. It just takes into account how far you went and how long it took you. It doesn't take into yeah. account whether you actually went that the whole time. And so, so okay. your, your car might read 35, but it also might read 36 or 34, or it might go up to 38, or if you're going up a hill, it might go read 20, uh, 32. Like, like it's, the car has a constant speed over the duration of, of, the, tr of the trip. 
maybe yeah. that makes more sense. Um, I'm being a little too wordy, but I also kind of don't know what the instructor um, is asking for. <laughs> so um, maybe there is more. Maybe there's more to this. I don't know. Were these days in class that you missed or is this homework? What's going on here with this stuff? Um, this is just an extra worksheet that's similar to um, a test that we're going to take. Okay. okay. So the, the, the thing that the instructor is really trying to emphasize is the difference between speed and velocity. And, and sp basically, you're going to get a question on your test that says, what is speed or what is velocity or how are they different? How are they the same? And um, they can be the same. But it's they're the same if you're going in the same direction. But as soon as like velocity, in the case of velocity, as soon as you circle back around, velocity is going to be different than speed. So I think the thing that the instructor here is emphasizing, see this winding, mm -hmm. winding road. So when you're when you're when you're driving up a mountain, you generally like you, you go this way, and then you go this way, and then you go this way. Right? Yeah. Like like you, you travel all this, but you, the actual displacement isn't that much. That's your, that's your mm -hmm. displacement. That's your delta X. Whereas, whereas what's in red here, what's in red is your D. Yeah. And you see the difference? Like you went a long ways, but the actual d uh, delta X is, uh, is very different. So the answer is no, mm -hmm. like, like uh, the, the, um, the speed here is distance over time. The velocity is the change in X over time. So the, maybe the time is the same in both. Like, like, I don't know, let's just say it took an hour in both cases, but the Delta mm -hmm. X might be one mile and the, the D might be um, 10 miles. Cause you're, mm -hmm. you're winding, right? You're, you're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the so the answer here is no. There's it's not constant velocity because the the change in position, depending on where you're out on the road, it's it's very different. Like um, if you're you're if you're at point one, that's that's your delta x. But if you're at point two, you know that's your delta x. If you're at point three, that's your delta x. So, th so think of delta X as like your straight line distance. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if this is clear or not, but but the the but when okay. you're looking but when you're looking at speed, your D is always the same because your 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 the distance you traveled, you're, you're always moving along the same course of time. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes they ask for questions like, give an example of speed, give an example of velocity. Um, and I think the car is the good one where you say something like, hey, if I'm driving down the road and my friend's driving down the road the other way, we can have the same speed. Okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. we're going in opposite directions. Uh, velocity, the, the, the thing that they're trying to get you to understand about velocity, velox, velocity cares about direction. And, and in, in other words, it cares where you start and where you stop. Okay. So let me try. To, let me try one more thing here. So let's say you have a you have a car. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a horrible car, but that's a car, and 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 it's inside. It's inside a garage. Okay. And what's interesting about this is it's got a door in the front and the back. So you can you can actually go out the back, you can go out the front. Okay. And let's consider the following scenario. You drive it forward and then you drive it backwards. How far have you driven it? Nowhere. Well, the distance, oh. we'll do distance. Your distance is, let's okay. just call this uh, 100 meters. And this is 100 meters back. Your distance is 100 plus 100. 
But what's your delta x? Well, you want 100 yeah. forward and 100 backwards. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you can go backwards, right? So that's scenario one. So let me, let me change colors here. Scenario two is you go backwards and then you go forwards. So in scenario two, your distance is you went backwards 100 and you went forwards 100. So notice it doesn't care whether you went backwards or forwards. And that's what I mean by mm -hmm. speed. Like when you get in your car, it doesn't tell you, hey, Julia, you're driving negative 42 miles per hour. Like that's too fast. It just says 42 miles per hour. It doesn't care whether you're going up, down, left, right, north, south, east, west. But yeah. with, with velocity, you have to take into account, well, backwards, if backwards is negative, I went negative 100, then I went forward 100. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the key difference here. It's like velocity, let me, let me so this, so the, the let, me, let me summarize this here. So distance goes with speed and change in position goes with velocity. Change in position. Okay, so we can move on to number four. Okay. Bowling ball rolls down a 19.5 meter long alley at a speed of 5.5 meters per second. How long will it take to get to the pins? So you have an equation, D, Sorry, S equals D over T. What is 19.5 and what is 5.5? And there's two, there's two ways you can do it. You can, you can obviously read the words. You can also look at the units. So speed mm -hmm. always have, has units of like meters per second. Distance is in meters and time is in seconds. So that's another way to kind of figure it out. But 5.5 is the S and 19.5 is the is the D. Okay. So we're gonna substitute these values into the equation. 5.5 .5 equals 19.5 over T. Now the absolute only way to get a variable out of the denominator is to cross multiply. It's absolutely okay. the best, best way. There are the kind of other ways, but they're variations on it. So you're gonna multiply diagonally. So that's 5.5 .5 times T equals one times 19.5. So now you're gonna divide both sides by 5.5. And if you got your calculator, go ahead and grab it. Um, so I get T equals 3.55 seconds. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let me come up with another problem that's like this, and then we'll move on to acceleration. So a ball, ball, ball is rolling down the driveway at a rate of 13 meters per second. And the driveway is 200 meters long. How long will it take to get to the bottom? All right. Okay, so let me just uh, make this slightly bigger. Wait, there it is. Uh, it is. Okay, so it's just like the last problem. It's just it's just um, different numbers. But go ahead and try solving this, please. Mm
um, 15 meters per second. It's just, it's just a time. It's just a time. So it's, oh, it's going to be in 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Okay, let me double check that. Yeah, 15.4, but yeah. Okay, let's move on to number five. So the main equation that you have to have to know is that S equals D over T. And hopefully that's kind of clear. I, I You probably don't get an equation sheet, so you want to make sure you you know, have that down. So in all of these mm -hmm. problems we've done, they're going to give you two of the three variables. So all you got to do is figure out which two are they giving you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now during an air show, an airplane travels the length of the 5,075 foot long runway in 13 seconds. What is the average speed of the airplane? Okay, this is the distance because it's in feet. This is the time. Okay. So they're giving you D and T. Now, my question for you is, do you have the answers to these? Because I'd like to know if, if they end up converting this to meters. Um, I do have the answers. So number five is your night per second. Say that one more time. Um, 119 meters per second. Yeah, so notice, notice they're giving this to you in the wrong in the units. So we need to convert feet, feet to meters. So we have to go feet to inches, inches to centimeters, and then centimeters to meters. Unless, unless you have another conversion, but that's, that's generally the one that people use. So there are 12 inches in one foot. There are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. And there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So these are all known conversions. You have to know these values. So let's get that number. Let's get that number here. So 5,075 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 100. All right, so I get, I get 1,546.86 meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the, the speed is the distance over time, your distance is 1,546.86 over 13. So you take that number you just calculated and divide it by 13. Let's do one more like this. Let's do one more like this. So let me get, um, make it up here. Um, a swimmer is able to traverse a 545-foot lake in 90 seconds. How fast are they swimming? This is really similar. It's it's the same units. It's the same uh, given values, meaning like I'm giving you the distance and the time. So go ahead and try coming up with uh, the correct answer there, please.
Um, 1.8 meters per second. Hey, sorry, Julia. Um, what was your answer? 1.8 meters per second. Yeah, let me uh, check that here. 545 and then 90. Yes, 1.85 meters per second. Okay, so we're gonna transition to the, uh, um, we're gonna transition to um, the acceleration worksheet. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. What are the three ways a car can accelerate or in general it's, it's generally asking what are the the three types uh of uh of acceleration so i had to look this up because i i actually don't know what the instructor is looking for here so there's a few options here um one is is speeding up mm -hmm. okay and, and you know that that's like going from a traffic light when you're at a light and then you go forward, you're accelerating. And the uh, opposite of that is is slowing down. So you see it, you see it turn red and you hit, up, hit the brakes. Okay. And mm -hmm. then the last one is changing direction. Okay. okay. Now there's kind of, I'm going to, the nice thing I can do here is I can just copy and paste. There's kind of like a um, another way of looking at this. So some people say it's speeding up slash slowing down. One, another is changing direction. So see how, see how they merge the first two? And then the mm -hmm. third one is both. So you definitely want to look at your notes or talk to your instructor. Um, I don't I don't know what they want here. I mean this is this is not really a this is a conceptual question. So it's you want to give them whatever they are talking about in class. Okay. Do you have the answers to two? Um I only have the ones for like the conversion. Okay, let me let me try to answer these then. I, these again, it's kind of a conceptual thing. That's, it's I'm kind of on the edge of like, uh, come on, Mr. Instructor, you know why are you even asking this? But they, they are. So <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll look at them uh, together here. So, um, let me see if I can help here. If the speed of a body is constant is the velocity I want to get this right before I say it so that I don't um, Okay, I think part two is the easier one for us to start with. So if the velocity of a body is constant, and let's, so let's assume you're going this direction, you're always going right. This is part, part B. Okay. okay, if you're going right, so you start here, this is where you start, and this is where you end. Mm -hmm. You went D and you also went delta X, okay? They're the same, these are the same here because you're going in the direction. Now let's say you go a little bit further and you end here, you've still gone D and you've still gone Delta X. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the answer to the second one, if the velocity of a body is constant, the speed is always constant is a yes, because of this, this same direction movement that they're going. Is that, is that okay, is that clear? Kind of. Okay, 
So part A is, is different though. Part A is somehow you start and then you loop back around, but you're always going the same speed. So think of like a track. Part B is really the track. I'm sorry, part A is the track. Like if you're on a track, you can keep going the same speed over and over and over and over and over again, right? Yeah. So your distance is always increasing. Like if you're going around a track, your distance is just going up like that. Yeah. But your change in position, you're getting you're getting further away, but then you come back. Yeah. Right? You get further away and then you come back. And then you get further away and you come back. And then you get further away. Whereas your and this is your delta x. So see mm -hmm. these are not the same. Yeah. Okay. So the, 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 and this is, this is tough. I mean, this is one as you just have to almost like commit to memory um, at this point. It's just too hard to like um, ter, uh, take apart the words, but velocity is, means like you care about the direction you're going. Yeah. And so uh, I'm not sure how else to do it other than to leave it like this. <sighs> I wish I could do better. I, I think just reading the words a few times might help. Let me, let me try one more time. So, so if you're, if you're on a, if you're on a runway, if you're on mm -hmm. a runway and you're going that way, speed equals velocity because you're going in the same direction all the time, but on a track, yeah, they are not the same speed does not, does not equal velocity because you're always you're coming mm -hmm. back to where you started yeah okay that makes more sense all right all right so let's let's see um let's see here. okay so number three okay an airplane comes to land and touches down at a velocity of 60 meters per second and then comes to a complete stop in 19.5 seconds determine the acceleration of the airplane okay so you said yesterday you're like matthew we use this equation v final minus v initial over time is that right yeah okay what is 60 meters per second is it the initial velocity or the final velocity um final so the, the, the airplane comes to a complete stop, means it's not moving. You've been on an airplane, right. I'm sure. So your, so your airplane is moving, yeah. and then it's not moving. So V final is zero. Uh, v initial is okay. 60. The time is 19.5. So we have some numbers here, zero minus 60 over 19.5. So if you're doing this in your calculator, make sure you put uh, parentheses in the numerator or only put negative 60 in the numerator. Okay. Uh, negative 3.636 repeating. So I got negative, this makes you put in 19.5. Oh, I put 16.5. Yeah. Oops. So you get negative 3.1. Now, why, why is it negative? Why is the acceleration negative in this? Um, because you're slowing down. Yes. So the way you, the way you had done it, um, well, you would have gotten... you would have gotten 60 minus zero over 19.5 and you would have gotten positive 3.1 meters per second. So that would have indicated it's speeding up, mm -hmm. but, but it has to slow down. Yeah. So negative acceleration, you have to associate negative acceleration with slowing down. Mm -hmm. And positive acceleration is speeding up. Yeah. Okay. 
Like when you, when you're at a light and you're going forward, you're, you're accelerating because you're speeding up. When you hit on mm-hmm. the brakes, you're decelerating because you're, you're slowing down. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at number four. Actually, let me let me give you one just like this, okay? All right, a boat is getting ready to leave the water and is cruising at uh, 40 meters per second and comes to a stop after 12 seconds. Determine the acceleration of the boat. Okay. All right, so go ahead and try this one. Um, negative 3.3 meters per second squared. Perfect. Now, why is it negative? Because it's coming to a complete stop. It's slowing down, yeah. Now, does it have to come to a complete stop to decelerate? No. No. All right, great. Okay, so now let's do number five, four. Number four here. The cheetah, world's fastest mammal, is capable of reaching a top speed of 75 miles per hour. Now, first thing you should notice, this is not not in metric Mm -hmm. standard units. Like you should start noticing that, oh no, that that means you're gonna have a conversion. How long will it take a cheetah to reach its top speed from a resting position if it can accelerate at a rate of 3.98 meters per second squared? So we're gonna use the same equation that we've been using. Mm -hmm. Uh, V final minus V initial over time, but we have to convert this 75 to meters per second. So it's miles per hour. Okay. So let's convert miles first, okay? So there, we're gonna go miles to feet So there's 5,280 feet and one mile, feet to inches, one foot is 12 inches, inches to centimeters, there's 2.54 centimeters and one inch, and then there's centimeters to meters, in one meter there's 100 centimeters. So you're expected to know all of this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully those conversions, you either have them or you can figure them out. Um, you know, we can go through them, but these are kind of the standard ones here. So let's grab a calculator if you got it. Um, grabbing mine, there must be my calculator.
Okay, so this, so the number you come up with, just keep in mind, we've only taken care of the miles. We haven't taken care of the hours yet. So it's gonna be really big. But I get, I get 12, 0, 700, 0. 0.8. Mm -hmm. And that's in meters, but we still have this hours to deal with. So imagine hours is on the bottom. We're gonna go hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. So in one hour, there's 60 minutes. And in one minute, there's 60 seconds. So essentially, you're going to take this number you just found and divide it by 60 and then divide it by 60 again. So when you do all that, you get 33.528 meters per second. Let me know if you need me to clarify anything on that or go through it again. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that's its top speed. So that's its V final. It's V final. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's V final is that number we just calculated. If it starts from rest, what's its V initial? Zero. Zero. So a lot of times the answer is zero. If it's not moving, it's zero. Okay, so we can do this now. So the acceleration, the acceleration is V final, 33.528 minus V initial, which is zero over T. Now they give you A, I should have substituted in for A. A is, a is 3.98, yeah. So the thing is in the numerator, there's a, you can just reduce that 33.528 over T. Now, how do you get rid of variable in the bottom? Variable in bottom. Um, multiply by T. Yeah, so this is 3.98 times T equals 33.528. So notice you're basically done because you just divide both sides by 3.98, 3.98. All right, and let me get that here. So you should get T equals 8.4. Okay. Okay, so let's do one like it and that'll, that'll probably close up this session. A grizzly bear, why is it true as grizzly bear? But a grizzly bear can reach a top speed of 60 miles per hour. Probably not true, but let's just assume it is for a moment. This occurs because the because it can accelerate at 3.26 meters per second squared. How long does it take to reach this top speed? when starting from rest. Okay. So it's essentially the same question, but with different numbers. So I want you to work through this on your own and I will supply the answer in a few minutes. Um, so let me know if you have any, uh, any issues along the way. Okay. Um, 18 seconds. All right, so you did all that that quick, that quickly? That's pretty mm -hmm. fast. Um, what did you get 
for the meters per second of the of the uh, grizzly bear? What's its velocity? Oh, I didn't convert that. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So this so that's that's where this that's where the bulk of the work is is in doing this. It's the exact same conversion, but you got to do it for this problem here. All right, so when you do the conversion, the V final is 26.8 meters per second. So the acceleration is 3.26, V final is 26.8, V initial is zero, and T is what we're solving for. Okay. Hopefully you got, got caught up to that point. So you solve for T by cross multiplying. So it's 3.26 T equals 26.8. And then you divide both sides by 3.26. So T is equal to about 8.2 seconds. All right. All right. Well, I know we got another lesson scheduled here in about 10 minutes. So um, uh, if you, you'll have to reconnect uh, with the other Zoom link, but uh, I'll see you uh, shortly. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.